Hello? I'm so sorry, guys. Here, I'll be right back. I have two technical issues. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm sorry. Ugh, so I'm live streaming from my phone and it's been having these issues where it's just shutting off out of nowhere and it really is frustrating me. So let me know if you guys can hear me, I'm sorry. <laughs> let me see, I'm pulling it up on my computer to see if it's working. I hope it's working. Let's see. I don't know. <laughs> so frustrating. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I feel so bad. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. So for some reason, it's not showing on the computer. Okay. Oh, it's working on my phone. For anyone who's watching this afterwards, I'm so sorry. Let's see. Hmm. So it's weird. On my computer it's not working, but on my on here it's working. Anyways. Weird. I will get right into the questions, guys. Sorry. Okay, so that one's working. The art live stream is still on, it's so weird. Okay, I'll just type a quick message and then I'll answer your guys' questions real quick. Okay. I'm just gonna turn this live off and then I'll answer your questions. Thank you guys so much for being patient. I'm sorry about this. It's being so weird. Okay, I think we should be good. Thanks for being patient, guys. Okay, okay, I think it's working. Okay. Thank you guys, <laughs> sorry. What a hot mess. If my phone does it again, I swear to God. Okay, um, let's see, Esteban says, Hi Hiram, what do you think about the L'Oreal Fragrance Free Skincare Line? I'm using the moisturizer and 10% glycolic acid serum. Yeah, um, I think it's good, just be aware of L'Oreal sometimes using a high concentration of denatured alcohol, so SD or you know, denatured alcohol. Um, if I remember right, L'Oreal does formulate with a high concentration in their serums, which is par particularly why I was turned off to it. Um, just make sure you're aware of that. But um, but yeah, besides that, I think their fragrance-free line is, I actually like the Ole fragrance-free line as well. I think they have some really good options. Haley says, what are your thoughts on dermaplaning at home? Um, I think it's fine, just be careful. I, I just think it's better to go to an esthetician for that kind of stuff. And I know that sounds really elitist to say because an esthetician is not cheap, but you have options like chemical exfoliation out there, which are very safe, but very effective for the skin. Um, and dermaplaning is really nice because it kind of gives an instant effect and it also takes all the hairs off of your face. But in reality, the type of exfoliation that it gives, you can get just as good exfoliation from using good chemical exfoliants, which is why I'm like, leave that for the, you know, <clears throat> an esthetician and just do a good chemical exfoliation at home. 
Kennedy says, I work in healthcare and I need to wear a mask 24 seven. As a result, my lips are super dry and I've started breaking out around my mouth and chin. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you for what you are doing. Um, you're so valuable right now. And we, you know, I personally really appreciate the work that you're doing. So thank you. Um, I would say definitely this is the time to help repair your moisture barrier because you're getting very little moisture in that environment, which means it's, you know, very dry um, and, you know, becoming irritated. So really focus on repairing your moisture barrier. Don't go in with heavy treatments get really good occlusive hydrating moisturizers the crate uh, crave beauty great barrier relief is an amazing um, product for that because it really just helps to repair the moisture barrier and I think sometimes people when they're breaking out will go in with heavy treatments and that's not what you want to do dr. Dre actually made a video <laughs> it's funny in every live stream I'm always like talking about dr. Dre uh, but she gives really good advice in a recent video that she did about taking care of your face around the mouth area um, due to using masks so I would recommend that oh yeah a lot of you guys have come back in thank you for showing up again <laughs> um, <clears throat> Sam says, I'm looking for a replacement for the La Roche was a gentle wash, but that's cruelty free. I thought about the Inky List, but I don't know. You know, the Inky List salicylic acid face wash is going to be a little bit too harsh, I'd say, if you're looking for a gentle face wash. Um, I would say, hmm, it's so hard for me to remember which ones are cruelty free and which ones aren't. Um, oof, honestly, I'm going to have to think on that. I mean, used to the people... Um, it's cruelty free and vegan um, and their one is awesome um, if you have combination to oily skin highly recommend that if you have really dry skin I wouldn't recommend it um, besides that just go to my best of cruelty free brands and any of the cleansers from those brands I would recommend um, because because yeah they're just all cruelty free let's see <clears throat> Anna says, hi, Hiram. My dad has cancer and his medication makes his skin very dry and sensitive, but flat out refuses to use anything that's not in men's or very <laughs> gender neutral packaging. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Do you have any recommendations? Well, I'm so sorry to your dad that he is struggling, you know, um, with cancer and the side effects from medication. Obviously, that's, you know, uh, something that's terrible. Um, I would say, I mean, <clears throat> it's kind of hard when it comes to people who refuse to bend on things like gender um, expression. Um, even though I don't think skincare is a form of gender expression, it's just self-care. I would say start, you know, promoting the message that it's just like taking, you know, vitamins and just like sleeping and taking care of your health, brushing your teeth. Skincare is literally exactly the same thing. Um, but also there's a lot of brands that I've talked about in my video. Used to the People has extremely gender neutral packaging. The Inkey List, The Ordinary, they all have, you know, very simple glass packaging that is non- you know, gender conforming in any way, Rec uh, use products from those brands and just be like, oh, what I would say to clients in the past, even though I would kind of roll my eyes every time they're like, oh, well, this, this looks like it's for girls or whatever. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I would just be like, oh yeah, like a lot of guys um, use this product. Um, because then they're just like, oh, you know, well, if, if other guys are using it, then I'm comfortable using it. Even though a lot of guys and a lot of girls use the product. But, um, I, I found that, you know, usually saying that usually helps them, you know, it's, it's difficult at first. And I try to not roll my eyes too much because I'm like, okay, hi, I'm at one point you were sensitive to that type of stuff too, because you were a closeted homosexual. But, um, but I would just say, yeah, saying like using those products and then also just being like, um, a lot of guys like this, it's popular among men. That, that's a good way to kind of introduce them. And then hopefully after that, they start to open their mind a little bit more. Um, Kim says, hi, Hiram. Are lip products with AHA, BHA safe for the lips? Um, I'd say in general, yeah. Um, I just be a little aware. Lips can be a really sensitive part of the face and I wouldn't recommend exfoliating every single day, but yeah, I'd say it's fine. I mean, no, like no different than using lip scrubs. And honestly, I'd probably prefer it to lip scrubs, but I have personally never found a lip product that does have a high concentration of chemical exfoliants in them. So that sounds interesting. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I'd say it's fine. Um, Kellen says, I just developed really bad acne around my skin. I usually have dry skin with minimal acne. I, um, started new medication. Um, could that be affecting it? Absolutely. Um, and that's where I have to say you would have to go to a dermatologist or talk to your primary care provider about the common side effects from certain types of medication because, 
um, acne is a huge, a huge thing, um, usually when it comes to that. And as much as I do want to recommend skincare, I would never want to recommend something that could, you know, negatively conflict with the med medication that you're using. Um, so check with your primary care provider and see what recommendations they make or if, you know, if they do have any concerns or warnings about using skincare products. Um, I just don't feel comfortable recommending anything that could put you at risk. Christy says, hi Hiram, you've inspired my skincare routine and I love your videos so much. Thank you. Um, what mask do you recommend for dry acne prone skin and when should it be incorporated in a skincare routine? Ooh, um, so any dry sensitive skin, which you know is essentially dry acne prone skin, the Peter Thomas Roth Cucumber Gel Mask works mwah, wonders for my skin. It's incredible and every time I recommend it to someone, they're just like, oh my God, that was like one of the best masks I've ever used. I'm like, yeah, bitch. It's amazing. Um, so I definitely do recommend that one. Dry acne prone skin is a difficult one because most masks for acne are, you know, very meant for more oily skin. But I would also say any mask, uh, don't do the DIY um, masks like the Cowan Clay ones. Um, oh shoot. I'm trying to think there was a really good mask that had clays in it, but also had really hydrating ingredients. Oh, yes, the Youth to the People Superfood Mask. It's formulated with equal parts of glycerin and the clays that they use, which means it's really optimal for someone who doesn't want to have stripped skin afterwards um, and someone who does struggle with dry skin but still wants, you know, everything to be taken out of their um, pores, all the dirt um, and things that are, you know, p potentially causing acne. Um, so I'd recommend trying out that one because that one's one of the few products I found where it's a clay mask, but it's really hydrating as well. Um, hi Hiram, loved your videos, been binging them and already learned so much. That's so awesome. What should I look for in a lip mask? We don't have Primera in my country. Okay, yeah, um, if you guys aren't familiar, Primera, um, lip mask is my favorite lip mask of all time, um, just because it works so well. But in terms of a lip mask, I would say definitely avoid high concentrations of fragrance, of course, um, because the lip can be a sensitive area. Um, I'm okay with some fragrance, but sometimes... Companies feel free to like use a crazy high concentration of essential oils. I don't know why. It's kind of ridiculous, but I would say definitely um, look for lip products. Uh, I like to look for lip products that aren't formulated with like the basic lanolin and paraffin, um, just because those are such basic lip product ingredients. And while yes, they are effective, it just kind of communicates a lack of innovation on their end, um, which is where I personally prefer lip masks that have like beeswax and shea butter and, um, you know, uh, jojoba oil esters, different high quality ingredients that are really focused on hydrating the lip area. That's, that's what I would recommend. Let's see. Let's see, Catherine says, I've, I love using tretinoin, Paul's Choice B, BHA, and Biosense Lactic Acid. How should I alternate to get these best benefits? Ooh, I would just be careful about first over exfoliating your skin and second, drying out your skin. B, the Paul's Choice BHA, while it's amazing, it's known for being drying to the skin and tretinoin as it is, is extremely drying to the skin. So you really wanna compensate with a lot of moisture. Lactic acid is good, but Here's the thing, when it comes to tretinoin, um, while technically it's not an exfoliant, it does have some exfoliating properties. That's why a lot of dermatologists don't recommend exfoliating while you know using a really high strength retinol, which is what tretinoin is. Um, it, it depends on the person, but I just recommend being more careful about exfoliation and going in with both BHA and the lactic acid you wanna be careful about. I would say using those like once a week would be a good way of balancing that. But again, if you have tretinoin, you have access to a dermatologist. So I'd recommend asking your dermatologist about that um, because uh, like I said, you know, multiple times in this video, I don't want to give any advice that would conflict with your, you know, um, healthcare professional that you have. And, be, and, you know, you're very fortunate in the sense that you do have access to a dermatologist. So I'm just like, use them for all they're worth. <laughs> Jack says, hi Hiram, thanks for normalizing skincare for men. You've nearly convinced all my straight friends to start washing their faces. That's what I love to hear, that's so amazing. Oh my gosh, that makes me so, so happy. Skincare is self-care, it's taking care of yourself just like brushing teeth. 
Um, and I love that that's slowly becoming more recognized. That literally makes me so freaking happy. Um, of course, um, as a question, would you recommend using a cleansing brush? So I think cleansing brushes are fine, just don't use them every day. Every day can be really harsh, and it depends on the type of cleansing brush. Like if you're talking about like Clarisonic, definitely don't use it every day. I used to, and I highly regret that decision. But um, but if it's just kind of like in the shower, like the silicone like brushes that you use to use your cleanser, I think those are fine to use every day. But in general, I think they're great. Um, just make sure you use a really hydrating cleanser while using it so you're not overly stripping your skin. Be gentle when putting it across your face. Don't go in. Um, you know, just kind of like glide it across your face. And yeah, just don't use it every day. Thank you so much, Lilin. Let's see. Okay, is apple cider vinegar bad for your skin? Love you, by the way. Thank you, Carly. Um, I don't necessarily think it's bad, but I just, apple cider vinegar is usually used in the context of like DIY skincare, which is where I'm not a fan, just because again, we don't know the correct formulas and concentrations to be able to make these products in to get the best results on our skin or where it's too much that it can potentially cause sensitivity. And I think apple cider vinegar has some positive side effects. The Inky List recently came out with the apple cider vinegar peel. I have yet to use it, but looking at the ingredients, I think it's awesome. And, you know, being that I definitely trust the Inky List and their standards for formulas, um, it's, you know, I would say at a safe percentage, as opposed to just kind of like going crazy, you know, making your own witchcraft style <laughs> DIY skincare product that could potentially cause a lot of sensitivity and irritation. There, sorry. Sorry, I don't know why it's having issues today. This is so frustrating. Okay, um, Brianna says, is there products that are good to help with very, very sensitive dry skin? Um, yes, so the one that I always recommend, First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream, um, high concentration of colloidal oatmeal, um, and just really good ingredients to help really, you know, moisturize your skin, and it helped me with my eczema. The Biosense, I don't know if this is it, yeah, um, Omega Repair Cream, super hydrating, like really, really thick, creamy consistency that's very good and fragrance-free, um, so good for sensitive skin as well. Um, CeraVe Moisturizing Cream, I think is great. Um, kind of an underrated product, but I think it's awesome. Works really well for that as well. Sky says, hi Hiram, can I use an AHA toner in the morning and then BHA toner at night? I have combo skin that is currently more dry with minor breakouts. Yeah, definitely. I would just say don't go in with that combination every single day. You want to give your skin a break uh, when it comes to exfoliating. And if you are struggling with a temporary breakout, then yeah, I think it's fine to, you know, hit it. I'm um, kind of hard, but when it comes to just in general, your standard skincare routine, don't exfoliate every single day. You want to give um, your skin a break by doing it like every other day. But yeah, I think that's fine. Let's see. I use the Aztec Indian Healing Clay Mask and now I'm breaking out so bad. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I moisturized after the mask and didn't add too much apple cider vinegar. I don't know what to do. Yes, so that mask, um, I wish I could throw up the picture on the screen. The first time I did that mask, it looked like I had the most horrific sunburn of my life on my face and it lasted for a good 30 minutes after I used it. My skin was so sensitive and while, yes, it's good for clearing out the pores, holy shit, it causes sensitivity and irritation, which is why in general, I don't recommend that mask. Don't go in with it. more masks, exfoliating products, treatments, just have a super basic routine. Just moisturize your skin and cleanse your skin and that's it. And even if possible, don't cleanse your skin as much because your moisture barrier is already gonna be really stripped after, after using that mask. Go in with a good hydrating occlusive moisturizer that's focused on reducing sensitivity. So like the ones I just mentioned, the Biosense or First Aid Beauty ones, those ones are great. Or the Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief, amazing for just reducing that uh, sensitivity. Sorry, Crave Beauty barrier relief is right there um that's what i would recommend oh by the way do you guys like my new backdrop or not backdrop but like my new print i think it's so cute i love it so much sorry random <laughs> um pauline says hey queen my boyfriend desperately needs a skincare routine he does not have one not even sunscreen ah he has really sensitive and dry skin help Ooh, so I would say um, definitely go to my videos where my video where I talk about the best products for dry skin. Also, I recently did a video about the best products for sensitive skin. I make a lot of, you know, of my favorite recommendations there. And as far as a sunscreen, I mean, just use, for example, like the Purito Centella and Scented Sunscreen. It's a great product that's like both a moisturizer and a sunscreen in one, essentially. Also, the Biosense Sunscreen, another product that's a moisturizer and a sunscreen in one. Both of them are fragrance-free, great for sensitive skin. Highly recommend them. 
those. Let's see. Miriam says, thoughts on different gel. Will you make a best face mask video? So yes, I'm working on testing out a bunch of different face masks to do a video. Cause I don't know why I haven't talked about face masks on my channel very much. And looking back, I'm just like, whoa, why? <laughs> um, but thoughts on different gel, you know, I think different's great, but I had a horrific reaction to it. It was really bad. Um, but you know, I don't judge things by my personal reaction to it. Cause that doesn't mean, you know, it's bad for everyone, but, um, I think it's good. It's just, it's one of those ingredients you need to be really careful with. Um, even though it's very low sensitivity, my skin just lost its mind. But I will be making videos about different in the future, once my skin can tolerate it a little bit. Uh, Shanna says, hi, hi, I'm dry skin from Florida here. A quick question, favorite hydrating product from The Ordinary, help, I need hydration. Yes, yeah, so they're marine hyaluronics. Serum's definitely good. Um, their moisturizer, honestly, I don't think is bad. Uh, people with more combination of oily skin find that it's a little bit greasy, which, but I think it works on dry skin, like combo to dry skin. I think it works really well, but specifically their marine hyaluronics is definitely, definitely a good product. Elizabeth says, hi, Hiram, products for my 60 year old mom, please. Been just using Dove soap and Olay moisturizer ever since. Wow. Okay. So definitely no on the Dove soap. Simple Micellar Gel Wash. The reason I recommend it so much is because it's good for all skin types and it feels like a luxury cleanser, even though it's not a luxury cleanser. It just has such a nice consistency that works so well. Um, also the La Roche-Posay Gentle Hydrating Cleanser, really good as well. Um, Olay moisturizers aren't terrible. I mean, the Olay, do I have it here? <laughs> Um, I don't know if I have it here. Okay, maybe I don't. The Olay Hungarian Water Essence Moisturizer was really good. It was featured in my favorite drugstore moisturizer video or the e.l.f. Happy Hydration Cream. Definitely really good too. Um, both fragrance free, good for dry skin and sensitive skin as well. And like good introductory products in case someone's like, oh, I don't know if I want to start with like all these skincare products at once. Phoebe says, I'm a single mom that needs a quick and effective skincare routine. What are the most essential steps for oily and acne prone skin? Go watch my video where I made a skincare routine for Colleen Ballinger. I talk about a skincare routine for a busy mom on the go. Um, that's very, you know, short and effective. Uh, but I would say for oily and acne prone skin, definitely salicylic acid. Paula's Choice 2% BHA is incredible. I recommend it in every live stream um, or a salicylic acid facial cleanser like the Inky List or the CeraVe one. CeraVe one looks like this. Um, the Renewing Salicylic Acid Face Cleanser, definitely good as well. But for just general tips, go watch my video for Colleen Ballinger. I make all my recommendations there. <laughs> Emma says, hi, Hiram, I found your channel during quarantine and oh my goodness, it's been so helpful. I have combo skin and I'm wondering if, if or when you recommend double cleansing. Well, thank you for stumbling across my channel. That means a lot. Um, I would say, so for combo skin, double cleansing, if you wear makeup, Double cleansing should always be in a routine um, just because you really want to remove all the makeup from your skin. Um, so always um, with combo skin, I would just say maybe avoid um, oil cleansers that have like a high concentration of olive oil because olive oil can be comedogenic and a little bit harder to remove from the skin. But then again, I haven't seen issues in my skin with combo with um, olive oil and I have very oily skin, um, but that is recommendation. Um, my favorite cleansing oil is this one right here. It's the sorry, all my products, you can hear them, is the Calendula Cleansing Oil from iUnique. It has such high quality ingredients that aren't going to risk any type of um, comedogenic effect. Um, but yeah, I think cleansing oil or cleansing balm is really good. Just make sure you avoid a cleansing balm with polyethylene. Um, that's plastic and I just don't think it offers any benefit um, for the skin at all. Um, Biamo says, I just purchased the Paula's Choice 2% BHA and I would love to know how to exfoliate without a cotton pad and how you would apply it. Yeah, so if you don't want to use a cotton pad, just put it in the palm of your hand, press it together and press into your skin or just take your finger and then just press it into the affected areas. It's going to be sticky, so you're going to need to wash your hands afterwards um, as opposed to applying it with a cotton pad, but you do not need a cotton pad to apply toners or essences or anything like that. Or you can also go to Amazon and they have reusable cotton pads. I've been using them. They finally came in the mail. I've been using them and they're really good. Um, but be aware that they do soak up product, which is where I just recommend going in with your hand and then just patting it into those areas. Emma says, I have, uh, Emma says, I have sensitive combo skin and all I use is CeraVe and all of a sudden since quarantine, I've had a rash and acne on my face from being inside. What do I do? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, 
that would surprise me if CeraVe is causing that because CeraVe is so good for sensitive skin. I would say take a break from skincare. Just um, stop using products because sometimes, you know, rashes and those irritating reactions can be due to just an overexposure of skincare products. So kind of roll it back um, and then introduce a product one at a time. That way you'll be able to really figure out which product is causing the sensitivity. And then if it's like all, if you just experience sensitivity in general, it may be time to like um, get some professional advice or um, maybe introduce a product from a new line into your routine in case you are having sensitivity reactions to CRV. But I would say more likely than not, it's probably just like one product that's causing those reactions. Um, but you know your skin best, just test it out and see what you think. Lily said, followed your find your skin type video. I was dry and tight, but slightly oily on the T-zone. When I use any product or makeup, I get oilier. Sounds like you have combination skin, I would guess. Um, when I, you know, don't, essentially when I cleanse my skin and I see what happens afterwards, I do get oily in the T-zone and then my cheeks feel so dry and stripped. Um, so I'd rec recommend finding, you know, recommendations for combination skin. I've made videos about my skincare routines for combination skin um, that you can watch. Um, or just any of my videos where I talk about recommendations for oily skin as well. Um, it typically fares well with um, combo skin. Unfortunately, it sucks having combo skin because you have to deal with two different skin types, which means more products. But, you know, there's options out there. Let's see. <clears throat> Hi, Ram. How do you fix scars from acne? Love you. Happy belated birthday. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Um, so I would say, well, um... Go watch my video about how to get rid of acne scars. I make all my recommendations for there, depending on what type of acne scar you has, have, because there's multiple types. There's pigmentation, there's physical acne scarring, you know, like pickaxe scarring, all different types. So I make my recommendations there. Uh, Mia says, love you so much. Hiram, what are your thoughts on middle school skincare and how are you? <laughs> First of all, I'm good. I'm keeping so freaking busy, but I'm good. I'm so excited today. Can I just say I'm so excited because I've been using the same busted computer since college um, to, you know, edit all my videos. And one reason I haven't been able to really go in with editing on my videos is because it's so slow, but I just bought a new computer and it's coming in the mail today. And I'm literally so freaking excited to use it. It's gonna be so much faster. I'll be able to make more high quality videos and get things done faster. So my life is just about to improve so much. <laughs> but as far as middle school skincare, I'm making a whole series about teenage skincare coming out very soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, Leanne says, I started using the Use of the People cleanser and I love it, but I need a good moisturizer for dry to normal skin. I'm currently using First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream, but I don't love it. Thoughts? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I'm glad you love the cleanser. Um, a moisturizer for dry to normal skin. There's so many. Oh my gosh. Um, I would say it depends on why you don't like the First Aid Ultra Repair Cream. If it's not hydrating enough, the Biosense re Repair Cream is incredible. Super hydrating. Um, if it's not... If it's a little bit too oily, the Inky List Multibiotic, I think, is amazing um, for multiple skin types. I was talking about it in a live stream yesterday with the Inky List, and just from an ingredient perspective, I think it's so great. And um, I really like the texture after using it for a few days. What else? Ooh, the... Try the Elf Happy Hydration Cream. Honestly, I, I it's one of my favorite drugstore moisturizers, and I think it's, it's really good. Um, I just recommend testing out other ones because there's... It just really depends on why you don't like First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. Let's see. Uh, Sian says, Hi, Hiram. You've helped my anxiety and thanks so um, and skin so much. So thanks for creating. Of course, I love it when I hear that I'm able to help with your anxiety because I don't know how that's even fucking possible because I'm on screen just like... <laughs> like <laughs> talking so fast and looking like an anxious mess but apparently that calms some of you guys down so that makes me happy um i have dry combo skin with sebaceous filaments and overproduced sebum at night i hope you're safe as well okay so dry combo skin with sebaceous filaments i mean when it comes to sebaceous filaments in general i recommend salicylic acid but you don't have to apply it everywhere just apply it in the spots where you are struggling with sebaceous filaments but that also could be because you're not moisturizing your skin properly enough and your skin is overproducing oil in your face, which is where I recommend kind of taking a break from your skincare products and just going in with like a basic cleanser and a moisturizer, um, a hydrating moisturizer and see how your skin works with that. I noticed wonders when I started using a really hydrating moisturizer at night. Um, I saw wonders in my skin because I realized that during sometimes I was just overly stripping it, which was causing that excess oiliness. Um, 
So I would recommend trying that. I hope that helped. Let's see. Uh, Maureen says, hi, my cheeks are red, blotchy, and sensitive, but my dry is but my skin is dry and getting wrinkles under the eyes now. What do you recommend? Okay, so for red, blotchy, and sensitive skin, I always recommend, um, go watch my video about my recommendations for sensitive skin because I talk about the best products there. But just in general, minimize your skincare routine as much as possible. And um, niacinamide, a great ingredient, um, it, that is just going to reduce that sensitivity and irritation. But as far as wrinkles under the eye, I mean, retinol is always an ingredient that I recommend for wrinkles. The Inky List has a great retinol eye cream. Um, but retinol is also going to either like even further dry out your skin. So really make sure you're focused on repairing your moisture barrier. Um, I'd say Crave Beauty Great Barrier Relief, great product because it has niacinamide, but it's also going to reduce that sensitivity and irritation, and it's also really hydrating as well. It's a good serum, and then following up with a good moisturizer after that. And then after you've managed to, you know, figure out a good system for moisturizing your skin, going in with retinol after that to treat those um, fine lines. Sarah says, hey, hi, Arm. any advice on creating an affordable body care routine? Um, so I'm actually, <laughs> I, I had a video planned for body care and it's gotten postponed a little bit, but um, I will be coming out with it very soon. Um, so I'm excited for you guys to see that and I'll give all my recommendations there. Let's see, okay, so I'm almost, it's almost been an hour, well, it has been an hour. I'm just gonna answer a few more questions. Let's see. Ooh, niacinamide and vitamin C, one in the morning and second one in the evening, can I use it like that? Yeah, I just don't recommend using vitamin C and niacinamide together, at least if it's ascorbic acid. Um, don't use that at the same time as niacinamide, but using, for example, vitamin C during the day and niacinamide at night or vice versa, I think is fine. So many comments, I love this. Catherine says, just wanted to say you're amazing. Thank you so much. Someone asked, what does an astringent do? So an astringent helps to just um, kind of get all the excess sebum and oil off the top of your skin. And it can be good because it helps skincare ingredients not get essentially lost in the excess oil on top of your face, go deep into your skin. But astringents can be overly stripping to the face, which is why I recommend them at like lower concentrations. That's why I don't like high concentrations of, you know, alcohol in my skincare. That's why I'm not a huge fan of just using straight witch hazel um, because they are astringents and they can be overly stripping and, you know, mean that you're getting rid of, of too much sebum on your skin and, you know, causing more problems down the road. But yeah, that's essentially what an astringent does. It helps kind of pave the way for your ingredients to go deep into your skin. Thoughts on rosehip oil? I think rosehip oil is great. I think it's a great ingredient, um, you know, with a lot of benefits for dry skin, but it's different than rose damaskino oil. That's a fragrant essential oil. Rosehip oil is good. Taisha says, hi, I'm having a ton of red bumps pop up around my mouth since quarantine and I'm not sure what it's causing it or what to do. Red bumps usually are a sign of irritation, sensitivity. It could be from your diet. It could be from your skincare. I would say pull back on your skincare products. Stop using them for a little while because you're inside. It means that you don't have to use very many, which is good. Um, and then introduce your products one by one again and see which individual product is causing that sensitivity. But if you're continuing to experience that, then that could be something from your diet or an external factor of which I you know, wouldn't be able to help you with that. But that's a recommendation I would make. Catalina says, hi, Aram, you're so awesome. Discovered you on a live chat you did with Jen Lovers. Jen Loves Reviews. Oh, I love her. She's so great. She's so genuine. I really love her. And love you since then. Um, you've made my quarantine evening so much better after a long day of homeschooling three kids. Oh my gosh, you are a trooper. Good for you. Homeschooling three kids during quarantine, I cannot even imagine. I am going to be making a video about skincare for moms coming up pretty soon. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to post it, but... Um, I'm hoping it'll help with anyone out there who is struggling with kids right now and all the craziness um, from having kids at home 24 seven during quarantine. So watch for that. But thank you so much for that message. It's very sweet. Nina says, hey, what do I need to do with a sunburn on my face? Yes, so when you have a sunburn, focus on going in with just soothing ingredients. Honestly, if I had to recommend a product, um, I talked about it before. 
This is my go-to with sunburn. Every single time I have a sunburn, I use this within 15 minutes. Um, sorry, it's the Peter Thomas Roth Cucumber Gel um, Mask. Every time I use it, sunburn goes down. Every time I use it on anyone, the sunburn immediately goes down. It is just incredible. So I highly recommend that one. Sonali says, love from India. Hi, and take care. You are very, very precious. Thank you, Sonali. I can't wait. I was hoping to visit India this year. Crossing my fingers, I still can. India has been a country that I've wanted to visit my whole life, so hopefully I will get to soon, but thank you. Okay, one more question, because my mouth is dry as the Sahara Desert and I don't feel like I can answer anymore. Um, let's see. Um, oh my god, they're coming in so fast, it's so hard to read them. Hi Haram, how do you feel about facial oils like jojoba oil and sweet almond oil? I think they're great. I personally love jojoba oil because it's suitable to a variety of skin types. I'm not crazy about facial oils myself just because I don't really see the purpose a lot of times um, because you can have like hygiene moisturizers and serums that have great oils as well but if you are going to use a facial oil jojoba oil is incredible like the best sweet almond oil is good it's typically added just for fragrance um, but the good thing is that it doesn't really cause sensitivity in the skin um, and it has a bunch of hydrating and really positive benefits but if a primary ingredient on a product is sweet almond oil it's just kind of like uh, it's they're probably just doing that morally more for the natural fragrance but um both of them I think are great. Okay, one more, one more. Sorry, I feel so bad just like leaving you guys not answering so many of your questions. <laughs> I hate that. That's one thing I hate about, um, about these live streams. I just can't answer everything. Uh, Lilitha says, should I double cleanse if I play sports? So I think double cleansing for when you play sports is great. Um, just, you know, to get all that excess sweat off your face. But sports players usually have a problem with cleansing too much. Like they will cleanse so frequently um, during the day, like three times a day. And I just say, if you're working out in the morning, um, don't cleanse your skin before you go work out. Um, just go, you know, work out, cleanse your skin after, and then at nighttime, cleanse your skin again. Again, I don't think anyone should be cleansing their skin more than two times a day because that's severely putting your moisture barrier at risk and causing, you know, potential sensitivity, reactions, um, what was the other word I was going to say? Breakouts. <laughs> um, just different problems like that. So just be careful about that. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this live stream. Ugh. I love all these comments. I wish I could just answer all of them, but I think my energy level is like a little like, whew, especially after, sorry for all the technical difficulties as well of, of it randomly shutting off. Um, I will be doing a live stream again next Friday, um, 12 p.m. PST. Thank you guys for all of your questions and for always being so cool in these live streams. And please stay safe, stay healthy, um, be smart with your financial decisions right now. Um, and yeah, I hope everyone's doing okay. More videos will be coming soon on new video tomorrow and Sunday. I'm trying to upload like five times a week or create content five times a week for you guys. So stay updated with that. If you do want to see more daily content, go follow me on TikTok. Um, I just got verified there. That's pretty cool. Definitely something I didn't expect. It's just a fun thing. Um, but I create content nearly every day on TikTok. So you can also um, tag me in your skincare react skincare routine. Wow, my brain is like fizzled out after this live stream. You can um, tag me in your skincare routine and I'll react to it there. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys in the next live stream and in my video that's coming out tomorrow. Bye guys.